On a cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. No throne without your cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. No throne without your cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. No throne without a cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. No throne without a cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. No throne without a cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you for me, sing church, no me without you. No throne without a cross, there's no sacrifice without your blood. All this you did for me, no me without you. Father, we worship you this morning. We thank you, Lord, for another privilege that you have given us to come before your throne, to come before your face, to say you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. My Redeemer, you are worthy. To be praised, you are worthy. One more time, worthy, worthy. You are worthy, worthy, worthy. My redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Father, we worship you. Father, we give you praise yeah. for you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy to be lifted, to be wor to be worshipped. You alone deserve our praise. You alone deserve our worship. You alone deserve our adoration. We worship you. Somebody worship him this morning. This is not a spectator sport. Lift your hand and worship the Lord. Lift your hand and praise the Lord. I can't worship God for you. You can't worship God for me. You cannot serve God for me. I cannot serve God for you. Akatima lendo romanti la garana ndosia la damanda sia nambatosia. Everyone who approached the throne of grace, the Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and to find grace in a time of need. Akanima ndosia kele. I cannot go for you. I can lead you. I can inspire you, but I cannot go for you. Only you can approach to your king. Only you can approach to your maker. Yeah, and he has given you everything you need. He has given you a voice. He has given you a body. He has given you a spirit, a soul, a mind. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Father, we thank you because you are worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our praise. We give you worship. We give you adoration. We offer you the fruit of our lips. 
Lord, we shed the weight of yesterday. We shed the weight of yesterday. We confess our sins before you. The Bible says if we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Sins of omission, sins of commission, sins we did without knowing, sins we did on purpose. Lord, we confess them before you and we ask for your forgiveness and we receive your mercy. We receive your favor. We receive your forgiveness. We receive mercy this morning. Your word says, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy on and I will show compassion to whom I will show compassion. On. Lord, I thank you for I am the one that you have shown mercy. I want you to say that I am the one you have shown mercy. I am the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown Bishop mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. That's why I am here today. You have shown me mercy. That's why my family is not scattered. You have shown me mercy. That's why this ministry is still here. You have shown me mercy. That's why I'm still breathing. It's not by my power. It's not by my might. It's by your spirit. It's not because I know how to do it, like they say in my language, Momoshe. It's not because I know how to do it. It's not because I am perfect. It's not because I did everything perfectly. It's not because of even my prayer life. It's not because of my study life. It's because of your mercy. It's by your mercy that I'm not consumed. Lord, I give you honor. I give you praise this morning. We give you praise as a church. We lift your name on I. Fire Church, we lift your name on I this morning. We magnify you for you are worthy. You are worthy you are worthy you are worthy you are worthy <coughs> reveal our secrets we are you are worthy the mighty one the one that does mighty things the, the one that does great things we worship you the one that has kept us we worship you the one that has kept us we worship you we give you praise we worship you we magnify your name we bless your name we bless you lord you are holy and forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, holy God. And forever you are God. Join me, church. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, holy God. And forever you are God, forever you are God. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, holy God. And forever you are God. Sing hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah to our King. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to our God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God in this church. We bless you, Lord. You are holy, holy God. And forever you are God. Father, we worship you. Father, we honor you. For you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. You alone are worthy of our worship. You alone are worthy of our praise. If we had a thousand tongues, it's not enough. If we had a million tongues, it's not enough. If all the hairs on our head is 
tongues is not enough. We worship you, we worship you, we worship you. Our King, we magnify your name. We bless your name, we worship you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for mercy, O oh God. Lord, we come boldly to the throne of grace. We come boldly to the throne of mercy. We come to the mercy seat. We come to mercy seat. We come to mercy seat. We bask in your mercy. We swim in your mercy this morning. Thank you for mercy. Over the preacher, over the audience, thank you for your mercy. Over everyone under the sound of my voice, thank you for your mercy. Your mercy will produce that miracle. Your mercy will produce that lifting. Your mercy will produce that deliverance. Your mercy, your mercy, I speak mercy over everyone under the sound of my voice. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak the mercy of the Lord. The mercy of the Lord in your job, in your family. The mercy of the Lord in your ministry, in your body in your health, in your finances. The mercy of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord. In that situation, in that court case, the mercy of the Lord will speak. In the name of Jesus, in that custody battle, the mercy of the Lord will speak. In the name of the Lord Jesus, in that witchcraft attack, the mercy of the Lord will speak. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I speak mercy. I speak mercy over you. I speak mercy. Let the God of all mercy, all mercy, visit your home in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost Kakatima Lagaria hover over you. Let the Holy Ghost hibernate over you. Ayima Koska Hiarabamboshi and let mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Let the mercy of the Lord bring you that favor. Let the mercy of the Lord bring you that job. Let the mercy of the Lord bring you that deliverance. Let the mercy of the Lord speak. The balloon da liya da kari maluga tia la kosi alaga. The word of God that speaks better things than that of Abel. The mercy of the Lord that speaks forgiveness. The mercy of the Lord that speaks healing. The mercy of the Lord that speaks deliverance is heavy upon your life today. Is walking in your life today. The akatuma liya ra aiki ala brana siu. The angel of mercy is deployed into your family, into your affairs, in the name of Jesus. The angel of mercy is deployed into your week. The angel of mercy is deployed into your month. As we begin a new month in October, in a few hours, mercy opens that gate for you in the name of Jesus. Mercy opens that gate for you. We step into the 10th month. Number 10 is the number of government, I believe. No, no, 12 is government. Ten is perfection. Langen tumbra langatedia. The ning romanti ningetedia. Lego tumbra ningatia. Perfection enters your life this month as we enter into the month of October in the name of Jesus. Meanwhile, September is not finished. Whatever God has promise whatever god, whatever god has ordained for your life in the month of september that has yet to be delivered i release angels now to the i dispatch angels now that excel in strength to bring solution to bring results in the name of jesus answers are coming in the name of jesus fire church answers are coming in the mighty name of jesus if you believe it say amen answers are coming in the name of the lord jesus a closed mouth is a close destiny answers are coming in the name of the lord jesus answers are coming in the name of jesus healing in your body in the name of jesus deliverance in your life in the name of jesus restitution and rest restoration in your family in the name of jesus everything that the enemy has stolen they are restored in the mighty name of the lord jesus Mercy begins to speak for you in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you turn, mercy speak in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we honor you in the name of Jesus. Whew. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you for your mercy. We give you mercy. Welcome to church this morning, Fire Church. I want you to adjust yourself, sit properly, get your Bible, get ready for the Word of God. The word of God is life. The word of God is solution. The word of God is wisdom. The word of God is supernatural solution. 
Hallelujah. I'm excited to give, bring the word of God this morning. This is Pastor Bishop. I'm excited to bring you the word of God. And this is Fire Church. Over the last couple of weeks, the Lord has been speaking to us. Something that the Lord spoke to me. I woke up. If you listen to the first, the second, and the third message, you will catch up on what this is all about. Uh, and I'm going to continue in that series, in that message, for he himself knows what he will do. And this was the story that we find in John chapter 6, when Jesus fed the 5,000. There was another story where Jesus fed 4,000. But this phrase just woke up in my spirit. I hope I woke up in the morning and the Lord spoke this phrase in my spirit for he himself knew what he would do. And as he spoke, it was like a download. It was like a, a major download that just exploded in my spirit. And this word has been growing and growing. And now we are in the fourth or maybe fifth message now. I, I've lost count. So today we are going to go into Luke chapter number five. Last week we were in Luke chapter four, uh, or the week before that, uh, when we looked at the message where Jesus found the place where it was written, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me for he has anointed me. Now we are in Luke chapter five. Glory to God. Mandeko suta libra nanto si. I'm going to begin from verse one. The Bible says, glory to God. Get your Bible. One of the ways you assimilate the word of God is, number one, you are listening to what the preacher is saying. You are not thinking about lunch or thinking about work or thinking about anything outside of what is going on in the service. You are paying attention to what is being said. And then secondly, you are following what is being read by reading the Bible along with the, 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 the preacher or the teacher or whoever is delivering the message. You are reading along with them. As you are doing that, the Holy Ghost will begin to show you even beyond what the preacher is saying. He will begin to take what this preacher is saying and expand it in your heart. So if you want to receive the best, I'm just um, taking a pause, taking a sidestep. If you want to receive the best of any message, I don't care what message is it, whether it's a message on the prophecy, whether it's a message on marriage, whether it's a message on salvation, it doesn't matter what message is it. If you want to receive the best, your mind must be engaged. Your body must be engaged. You must be present in the room. And many times people are in church, but they are not in church. They are in church, but their mind is a million miles away. Their mind is actually even worried. You are in church, but you are worried. This is a word for somebody. You are in church under the sound of God's word. You are hearing God speaking, but you are worried. I rebuke that spirit in the name of the Lord Jesus. Luke chapter 5. So it was, as the multitude pressed about, because God has already, the Holy Spirit is pulling me back on that, because God has already given you a word about worry. He said, fear not. He said, cast all your cares upon him. He said, do not worry. Uh, it's in plain English. He said, do not worry. And he told you what to do. Cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. There's somebody watching me right now. There's money problem. You are, you are worried. You are listening to this and then you are worried. God is saying, cast all your cares upon me. Now, there are things you need to do in the natural. You need to go get a job. You need to go work. You need to go do this. You need to go do that. And the message that we are looking at today will give you even more insight. So follow this message. But ultimately, God said, do not worry. Cast your cares upon me, for I care for you affectionately. I care for you watchfully. That's a word for somebody. I did not plan that. That was inspiration in the moment. The last five minutes was not planned. In fact, the, 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 the whole service so far right now is not planned. I, I just spontaneously, the Lord is leading me. So Luke chapter 5. The Bible says, so it was as the multitude pressed about him talking about the Lord Jesus, to hear the word of God. Again, this is again what I alluded to at the beginning. As the multitude pressed, there's, when you are pressing, you've been in a crowd before where there's a lot of people and people are being pushed left, right, and center. You exert some energy. You exert some force on your own so that they don't push you down. 
they, that's a, that's the picture of what we are seeing here. Depressed. We see people go to sports events to go watch football, basketball, and other sporting events. And they are in the crowd, maybe in the queue, waiting to get their tickets, or maybe as soon as they are exiting, or while the, the, the sporting event is going on. And there's a crowd of people to watch something that has no eternal value. I'm not saying sporting event is wrong, but it has no eternal value. It's not going to take you to heaven. It's not going to help you pay your bills. Probably not. It's not unless you are invested in the game or there's some way you are making money out of it. But there's no real eternal value. But here, the multitude, the Bible said, they pressed about the Lord Jesus. Why? Not because Jesus was giving out food. I mean, we read about the situation. That's what precipitated this message. John chapter 6, when he fed 5,000, that Jesus gave out food, earthly food. But there was, he wasn't giving out money. He wasn't giving out anything that you would say in the natural. He was giving out the word of God. And the word of God is of more value. The word of God is of inestimable value. You have to elevate. The, you have to put value on the word of God. You have to put value. You have to put premium on the word of God. And that's when the word of God will begin to find expression in your life. Glory to God. That's a word for somebody. You have to place premium on the word. Are you listening to the word of God only on Sunday? Are you reading your Bible only on Sunday? That's when you only read your Bible when you come to church and the preacher says, open your Bible to so and so. And that's the only time you read your Bible. Then you have not placed premium on the word of God. This crowd has placed premium on the word. They are pressing. For what reason? To hear the word of God. That is stood by the lake Genesaret. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Glory to God. Then he got into one of the boats. Remember, there were two boats. So he got into one of them, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. The boat has been pulled from the water to the shore. Maybe it's on the, on the sand. And Jesus said, push it out into the water. And he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. I want you to be with me in your mind because God gave you a mind and you can use it for good and for evil. You can use your mind to worry. That's the same place where we worry. You can use your mind to picture bad things, to picture uh, something bad happening to you. Maybe even picture pornographic materials or picture you losing your job. You're using your mind to do all of this. That's imagination. But you can also use your mind to picture God delivering you. You can use your mind to picture that job, phone call. You can use your mind to picture good things. You can use your mind to picture your children doing well. You can use your mind to picture your husband doing well, your wife doing well, your family doing well. You can use your mind, imagination. God has given you imagination. And when you are operating with sanctified imagination, imagination based on the word of God, you are operating in faith. You are operating in the will of God. So I want you to use your imagination, your mind, and see this scenery. Jesus is sitting on the boat. And remember at the beginning, we opened by a multitude pressing against him. So there was a lot of people, hundreds, probably thousands of people gathered for one purpose that they may hear the word of God. Do you put premium on the word of God like that? That you press to get to it. In other words, when you open YouTube, you, you, you go open YouTube to listen to worship or to listen to messages. Or you just open YouTube to watch nonsense. Or you open your smartphone to watch nonsense. Or you open your smartphone to do all kinds of crazy stuff. These people... They place premium on the word of God. Is the word of God premium in your life? And so now we see, as we move forward with this, Jesus requested Simon. There were two boats there. He requested the one that belonged to Simon. He said, push out a little bit. And for what purpose? So that he might deliver the word of God. And he began to teach the multitude from the boat. So Jesus is on the boat. The multitude are on the shore line standing and sitting listening to the message verse 4 
when he had stopped speaking, when the message was done, service is over. He said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. Now, let me reverse a little bit. Um, the Bible said in verse 2, we are now in verse 4. Let me back up to verse 2. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. There, there is in italics, which means it was put there by the translators. So if you want to read it properly, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing nets. But if they are washing nets, it's very easy for us to conclude that the nets they are washing belong to them. The nets they are washing was something they just used. That's why they are washing it. They are removing dead leaves. They are removing figs, maybe things that caught in the nets that were not fish, you know, to get it ready for the next time they are going to go out to fish again, meaning that they were done. So I don't know what you do for, for your job. Uh, for example, if you own a, a shop, uh, one of the things that shows that you are wrapping up is number one, you put up the sign, we are closed. That's the first thing. So no more customers coming. And then you begin to close the register. You begin to close the window. You begin to close the back door. If there's a back door, you are wrapping up for the day. You are making, you are closing up for the day. So that's what Simon and his companions were doing here. They were washing their nets. They were done. So Jesus now said something that sounds very ridiculous. He said, after he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Nets, plural, for a catch. But Simon answered and said, said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. We have toiled all night and we caught nothing. I'm a professional fisherman. I know how this thing works. We have done this all night because in those days, and I think they still do it today, they fish at night because it's better to fish at night. The fishes, it, it's easier to catch them at night because of the darkness. Um, during the day, they have more visibility underwater, I think. I'm not a fisherman. so. Uh, but you notice in the Bible, and even today, professional fishermen, they do it at night. They do it at day too, but primarily they do it at night because they have more technology that they use today to catch fishes and all kinds of stuff. But back in Bible days, they use nets. So as far as... Peter or Simon at this time, as far as it was concerned, this was a very stupid idea. This was a non-professional idea. A non-fisherman is telling a fisherman what to do. Glory to God. A non-computer scientist is telling a computer scientist what to do. A non-engineer is telling an engineer what to do. That's the analogy. It's analogous to that. Whatever your profession is, you know, you know what you do. You, you are very good at it. You are a nurse. You are an, a doctor. You are an accountant. You are a plumber. You are an electrician. And some random person comes to you and starts telling you how to do your job. That's the way it looks like here. And that's why Peter was being very respectful. He said, uh, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. In other words, there are no fishes here. I mean... This is a dead. This is dead water. This is dead water. This is dead water. We have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, even though Simon thought Jesus, what Jesus was saying was ridiculous, he said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Jesus told him to let down the nets, plural. But he let down one net. Now, remember at the beginning of the message, the first message, I told you, if you know, for he himself knows what to do. That's where I'm going. Jesus himself knows what to do. The, the God of heaven himself knows what to do. For in him dwells all the treasures 
of wisdom and knowledge. If you don't know that scripture that I just quoted is Colossians 2, 3. For in God dwells all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And I'm not talking about wisdom uh, of how to do uh, medicine, for example, or how to be a plumber or how to be an accountant. All of that is in him. Remember what the Bible said is all treasures of wisdom and knowledge is in him. But specifically, what I must do, what Peter must do in order to get fish right this second in this passage that we are reading, that wisdom is in God. What you must do in the situation that you are dealing with, whether it's a spiritual problem, whether it's an uh, a employee problem, something at work, a colleague, or some conversation that needs to be had, and it's a very delicate conversation, he himself knows what to do. This is why it's very smart, it's very wise to seek counsel from him that has all wisdom and knowledge. I've told you before that every knowledge that exists today, that we enjoy today, the knowledge that gave us airplane, the knowledge that gave us the internet, the knowledge that gave us all kinds of furniture, the knowledge that gave us technology to build houses, the knowledge that gave us technology to paint, to do architecture, to do all kinds of things that you can imagine. All of that knowledge, that wisdom came from him. Now, specifically, when I, you know, there's a body of knowledge in medicine, for example, but when a doctor is looking at a patient and they've exhausted everything that they need to do, they've done everything like it's the case here, the knowledge of what to do on a natural plane. Now, I'm not talking spiritual now. I'm not talking about healing power of God coming into that person. The knowledge of what to do in that natural situation the answer is still in God. The answer is in God. For he himself knows what to do. I'm not deviated from our thoughts, from what God gave me. You, 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 you can see when I told you that when God gave me that phrase, he just exploded in my heart. We are now on message number four or five, and it's still growing. And I can continue literally to preach on this for the next year. There's so much material in the word of God on this topic. That's how big God is. Because every time I go to him, he gives me revelation of what to say next. Every time I go to him, he gives me revelation and he will never be exhausted. He is the inexhaustible one. So now back to this. Peter is saying to Jesus, we have toiled all night. We have done everything. We've gone to Mayo Clinic. We've gone to... Uh, uh, Cornhill, we've gone to Duke, we've gone to John Hopkins, we've gone to this, we've gone to that. We've seen all the specialists in this special area, um, cardiologists, maybe you have a heart problem and they've examined you. Now, there's again, there's a body of knowledge that the cardiologists may be able to use, surgery, medicine, that will give you health, that will give you some measure of health, maybe 60%, maybe 80%, maybe it's 95% better than where you are now. But there is knowledge beyond that in God that will give you 100% on the natural level. I'm not talking spiritual now. On the natural level that God will give to the doctor, that God might give to you, that will give you 100%. We are not even talking about spiritual intervention when God, the healing power of God comes and there's no, uh, there's no surgical site. There's no doctor involved. It's Dr. Jesus himself that shows up and heals your body. Glory to God. He himself knows what to do. I want to impress this truth in your spirit. So the next time you are confused, the next time you are in a dire condition, you don't know what to do. The reason you don't know what to do is because you have not reached into the wells of him that has all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Glory to God. Whether you are a student, you are, you are struggling with mathematics, uh, you are in political science, or you are in computer science, or you are in governmental studies, or you are in whatever studies, and you are stumped, and there is answer in God. Glory to God. This morning, I was, um, I was doing something uh, with my wife, 
and there was something very naughty not no not anything that you might be thinking nothing like that i was helping her to comb her hair so clean your mind i was helping her to comb her hair and there was some naughty situation going on there and in that moment the holy spirit just quickened my spirit there's wisdom in him so i began to in 10 seconds god is my witness the knot was undone so I've learned this key. When you are stuck, when you are in a condition that you don't know what to do, tap into the reservoir that is in you. Remember, that reservoir lives on the inside of you. His name is the Holy Spirit. That reservoir lives on the inside of you. His name is the Holy Spirit. Whether it's out to come out air that will not hurt the other person, whether it's out to iron dark clothes, whether it's how to fix a plumbing problem in your house, whether it's how to uh, put in an application for uh, a visa or an application for permanent stay, whether it's whatever it might be, there is a wisdom in God of what to do. So Jesus told Peter or Simon here, launch out into the deep and let down your net. When you look at it, like I said, we've talked about fishermen and the, men, the, the knowledge they have. It was ridiculous to Simon. But Simon said, nevertheless, at your word, I will do it. You, have to, you and I, we need to learn to say, nevertheless, your word says I should give. I'm going to give. <laughs> Naturally, it doesn't make sense that I should give. Because when I give, I have less. Right? If I have, let's say I have $100. And God says to give, and I decide to give $10, which is 10%, my tithe, or $15. Now I don't have $100. I have less than $100. But God says, give, and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men give to your bosom? In other words, when you part with a little bit that you have, I'm going to multiply the rest over to you. It doesn't make sense. That math does not compute. A mathematician will tell you that's foolish. And there are people online, there are people on social media, social media, media evangelists that will tell you giving money or giving tithe is unscriptural. You need to study the Bible for yourself. Don't be like the Berean church. Uh, in one of the hot topics in the body of Christ today, healing has a bad rap. Healing and miracles has a bad rap. The supernatural has a bad rap. Also, giving, especially tight. Oh my goodness. People that are born again, believers, children of God, serving God, they will fight you and they claim that they have scripture. They will fight you that it's, a pastor is taking your money. Uh, the, the, the minister is taking your money. Unless you have the revelation. Again, this is one of those things that it comes via revelation. For example, I'll just make it a little bit plain. The fact that somebody that died 2,000 years ago on a cross called Calvary, you and I, we understand that because the scale has fallen from our eyes. God has given you revelation. You understand it, you believe it, you embrace it. But people that are not born again, they look at you and they think you are poiko loco. They think you are crazy. They think you don't know better. They think you are very stupid. They think you are very foolish. They tell you that how can somebody that died 2,000 years ago have any bearing on my life? And that's why they will tell you, the Bible cannot tell me what to do. God, what God wrote in the Bible cannot tell me what to do because it's a 2,000 year old book. And then they bring all kinds of arguments. It's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's the spirit of religion that is operating through those individuals. And if you listen to them, they will draw you away. They will draw you away from the revelation of truth. They will draw you away from the straight and narrow path. Glory to God. Glory to God. So every truth that we see in the word of God, it comes via revelation. What's the logic behind some man that lived 2,000 years ago? Some people still argue that because their historical records outside of the canons of scripture, outside of the 66th book of the Bible that tells us that Jesus lived. 
Just like we have journalists today, we have historians today that records events of activities that is happening. For example, there is a man named President Trump that is living right now that in a hundred years, when you read about him, because, you know, a hundred years from now, because of the internet, there's a lot of information that will be available to you. Let's just pretend there was no internet. And then they wrote about him. Uh, let's say 500 years from now. Let's not say 100. 500 years from now. Several generations has passed. Several generations. And then you are reading about Trump. And then you say, oh, this guy is interesting. You either like him or you don't like him. I'm not talking politics here. I'm just giving an example. The same thing, just like you can read about Trump 500 years from now, is the same thing that Jesus lived 2,000 years ago. Outside of the record of scripture. Just like we have Pontius Pilate that lived 2,000 years ago. Outside of the record of scripture. Just like you have Caesar, Augustus, and all these men, public figures that lived 2,000 years ago. And we have historical records of their existence. The same way we have historical record of the Lord Jesus Christ as a person that lived 2,000 years ago. And this man said he was God. Well, it takes faith to believe that. It takes faith to receive that. It takes revelation from the Holy Spirit to receive that. So Jesus told Simon, launch out into the deep for a catch. And Simon reasoned in his logic, but something helped him. And that something is wisdom, the Holy Spirit. He said, hmm, we have toiled all night. Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, remember I told you, it's not enough for you to know what to do. You have to go ahead and do it. The fact that you know that if you turn in your application for that loan or for that visa, they will give you the visa. If you never turn in your application, you never get the visa. You never get the loan. If you never showed up and turn in your application for that job to be considered. Now, I say that in the natural flow of things because God can bypass that. There are people that have given testimony. They never applied to a job. They never submitted an application. And yet, they gave them a job. So, there are many ways God can get things to you. But I'm talking in the natural flow of things. In the natural flow of things, you have to put in an application for a job that you are qualified for. They will call you for an interview. After the interview, if you are the successful candidate, they offer you the job. And if you say yes, then you start the job. That's the process. But there are many ways God can bypass that. There are many ways God can influence that with favor, with, with, with the mercy of God, with helping you with the job. He gives you favor with the interviewers. There, there are so many ways God can intervene in that natural flow. The same way, naturally, when somebody gets sick, they go to the doctor. The doctor gives them some treatment, do surgery. And if everything goes well, they are back to normal or close to normal, maybe 98%, maybe 97%, maybe 90%, close to normal. Then that's the normal flow of things. But God can bypass that normal flow. And that's what we see here. We see the supernatural. We see the supernatural wisdom of God at play. Because Peter, or Simon rather, because it's not Peter at this point. It's still Simon. Simon said, Master, we have toiled all night. Maybe you are watching me right now. You have tried every conceivable approach to solve that problem. You have exhausted everything. You have done everything naturally. You've done what the doctor told you to do. You've taken all the therapy, all the medication. You've, you've prayed. You've fasted. You've done everything you know to do. If the answer has not come yet, if the solution has not come yet, it's because there is still something that is missing. There's a missing ingredient. It's just like a, a, a cook, a chef that's cooking something. But there's this central ingredient that must be added. Without it, everything will be bland. It will be tasteless. It will be odorless. It may even affect the color. It may affect the final product because that final thing is not there. And that final thing may be, God tell you, cast your net on the, to the other side. 
It's counterintuitive. It doesn't make sense. You are tired. You are probably even mad, upset that you didn't catch anything. And then this man is telling you to catch your net in the same place where you have fished all night. You were there for 12 hours. You caught nothing. And this God is telling you to go back to the same place and cast your net in the same place. And you will catch. Now you have a choice. You are Simon. I am Simon. God has given you wisdom. And there's something called word of wisdom. Maybe I'll get into that in the future weeks. Word of wisdom is supernatural solution. Not natural solution. Supernatural solution. Supernatural insight and solution. When God gives you a word of wisdom, word of wisdom is akin to what we know, what we term prophetic instruction or prophetic act. When God gives you an instruction. So what is happening here, you can almost liken it to a prophetic instruction from Jesus to Simon. He tells him, Simon, cast your nets on this side. Specific location, specific instruction. So if another fisherman let me add this. If another fisherman that God has not spoken to, and this is where Rema comes in. This is Rema to Peter. This is Rema to Simon. This is the word of God to Simon. If another fisherman receives that, overhears what Jesus just said to Simon and casts his net, there won't be any catch. Because it's a tailor-made word. It's a word of wisdom. It's a revelation. It's a supernatural solution that God is giving to Simon about his situation in that moment. Kahimala. Do you understand that? It's a supernatural solution that God is providing to Simon in that moment. Because he has done the same thing before. He, has, he just did it all night. And all night may be a long season of your life, maybe a five-year period of your life, a 10-year period of your life. You have been waiting. You have approached this with every angle possible. You have fasted. You have prayed. You have done everything imaginable. Nothing has worked. And then God gave you a supernatural solution, which is word of wisdom. He said, I want you to do this. Maybe you have even done the same thing that God is telling you to do, but under the inspiration of that spoken word, that rema, and you obeying it. Because again, it's not enough for you to hear what God is telling you to do. You have to do it. The Bible says in James, you must be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. So Simon said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Verse, verse number six. And when he had done this, remember what I just said. When he has done this, before he did it, there was no miracle. Before Simon and his partners obeyed what Jesus said, there was no miracle. So maybe you are here right now. God has given you supernatural solution, wisdom of what you must do. But you are sitting on it. You are the one delaying your miracle. There is no demonic force that is delaying you now. You are the one delaying your miracle. God has told you what to do. God has told you to sow that seed. God has told you to start that, miracle, that business. God has told you to start that ministry. God has told you to go and apologize to that person. God has told you to go and to cut back, excuse me, to cut back on certain food items in your diet. Because God knows your body. He's the one that made you. And he told you, stop eating this. You know, I was sharing something with my girls yesterday. We went to pick up, was it yesterday or two days ago? I can't remember. Uh, we went to pick up uh, something. And so we were driving. As we were driving, uh, the Holy Spirit just came on me. And I began to share with them uh, as testimony. So there was this lady, um, a Christian, loved God has a great relationship with the Lord. She woke up that morning and she began to pray. In fact, the Lord led her, if I remember correctly, the Lord led her to Psalm 91. And she read Psalm 91, prayed Psalm 91, had a wonderful time. She, she had an appointment to go and see somebody in a part of town, in the city where she lives. This is here in America. She had an appointment to go and see somebody. But while she was in prayer, 
she had a check. I was sharing with my, my daughters how God will minister to you and speak to you. And many times, Christians ignore it. And when tragedy happens, when loss happens, we blame God. So this lady, while she was in prayer, she had a check, a bad feeling. You know how you have a premonition? You know, they, they use the word premonition. I just have a bad feeling that, you know, something bad is about to happen. Just like we have a good feeling that something good is about to happen. So she had a bad feeling. When you have a bad feeling in the midst of prayer and you are a child of God, the Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You should pay attention to it. You should pause. You should pause. You should ask God, Holy Spirit, <coughs> what are you saying? You know, we also, this happens to a lot of people. You are in, you're about to go out and then all of a sudden something happened. You forgot your keys or your, your tires all of a sudden are flat. And, or maybe something happened that's delaying you. And many times we, we plow through it. We just bulldoze our way through it. No, God may be saving you from an accident. God may be saving you from a wreck because all it takes is for you to be at the right point, at the right time, and then the accident happens. But because God wanted to delay you from being in that intersection at exactly 9.41 p.m. or 9.41 a.m., God began to delay you. And then you are getting mad. You are getting mad. You are getting mad. So I've learned from experience when something like that happens, I pause. I take a pause for like 30 seconds, a minute or two minutes or whatever. I say, Lord, I thank you. I don't know what you are preventing. I don't know what is happening. I don't know why this is happening, but I trust you. And I take some time to pray. I pray in the spirit. I say, Lord, I don't know what this is. I just pray. I just pray in tongues. And I just take my time. And I, whenever the situation has passed, the delay has passed, and then I continue with my day. So this lady, she had this check not to go to that part of town. But she, she went anyway. That's what we do. Many of us, believers, many of you that are watching, you do it. You say, ah, I quoted Psalm 91. So now fast forward, she called into a ministry, uh, Kenneth Hagin ministry. Uh, so this is a story you can verify. She called into Kenneth Hagin ministry and the, the minister that picked up the phone was Keith Moore. Keith Moore was working for Kenneth Hagin at the time. Uh, as you know, the people that you, when you call into a ministry and somebody call, picks up the phone and prays with you, Keith Moore was in charge of that team working on that Kenneth Hagin at the time. So he picked up the phone and the lady began to cry on the phone. You know how she's upset. She's mad. She's mad at God. She's upset. She has questions. Why did this happen to me? Why did God not protect me? And do, so while she was talking, Keith Moore said, I began to ask the Holy Spirit. And this is a, 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 a key that you may also may not know. Or if you know, I want to remind you. Every child of God, every time you are faced with a situation, ask the man, the God on the inside of you, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what do you want me to do here? Lord, what? there's something that happened to me recently that involved a major... Uh, a major decision. I don't want to go into the details. And if I made the wrong decision, it would have costed me a lot of money, a lot of money, significant amount of money. And if I listened to my flesh, the way my flesh was speaking, the advice I got from believers, I'm not putting believers down. I had the same advice for myself. So, I am not putting anybody down. I had the same advice for myself, but I paused. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? I took some time, a couple of days, because it was a major decision. I said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And the Lord gave me instruction on what to do. And I'm telling you, it was supernatural solution that saved me significantly. Saved me significantly. So this woman was on the phone. Why did God not save me? Why did this happen to me? Why did this happen to me? So Keith, Keith Moore began to search the mind of the Holy Ghost. We have not departed from our, our topic. For he himself knows what to do. Getting wisdom and revelation from God on what to do per time in every situation. And the Lord said, ask her, 
while she was praying this morning, I'm just trying to summarize now so that we can learn this, this message for today. While she was praying, what happened? She said, while I was praying this morning, I just had a bad feeling that, you know, about going out and especially going out to that area. But I rationalized it in my head. Again, this is what we do, believers. I don't care how long you've been a, a child of God. If you don't know this truth, you rationalize it in your head. I quoted Psalm 91 now. He that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of my God. Yes, the, the Psalm 91 is real, but you can't divorce or you can't separate rather or the same way, saying the same thing, divorce or separate the instruction from the Holy Spirit, the instruction from the one that has all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. <coughs> wisdom is not just how to make a chair, how to solve a problem. Wisdom is supernatural solutions in direction. And I'm going to cover that another time. In direction, telling you what you must do in this situation now, which is what happened to Simon and his companion here. So this lady said, while I was praying, I just had this nudge. Or I just had a bad feeling about it. A check. That's a check from the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is saying, my daughter, don't go. Don't go, at least not today. Or don't go, period. Because God knew there was a mugging a few hours down the road. God knew, because God sees everything, he knows everything. So God knew there was a mugging down the road. God was trying to prevent her from being mugged. That was why she had that bad feeling, that check in the spirit, but she went anyway. And because of that, they knocked her head. She had bruises and they took her purse. They took her money. And then she's asking the man of God, why did God not protect me? And the Lord gave the man of God the insight. God was giving you supernatural insight not to go that was the holy spirit speaking to you many times we are waiting for a booming voice like we see in the movies my dear child my dear bishop this is your father in heaven like the burning bush my dear John, and the, 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 the leaves are shaking and the water is dancing. You know, that's what we're expecting. No. Yeah, God talks that way. And there are very few instances that God would speak that way. But he, he communicates with your spirit. God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He communicates with your spirit. You must pay attention to the communications of the Holy Spirit. God will communicate to you through your five natural senses and your five spiritual senses. One of these days, I will teach along those lines. I was teaching that to my girls. Uh, and that's where the Lord led me to share that story with them. So she learned that day. That the Lord loved her, loved her enough to warn her in advance. God knows everything that's going to happen to you today. God knows everything that's going to happen to you this week. God knows everything that's going to happen to you this month, the rest of this year, the next decade. God knows everything. So when God, who knows everything, is telling you to put your money in that or to take your money away from that, or to get away from that relationship, or to get involved in that relationship, or to move to that city, or to move away from that city, is because it's giving you supernatural insights that will bring you to an expected end, to give you a future and an expected end, an end that is beautiful, an end that will lead to your healing, that will lead to your deliverance, that will lead to your prosperity, that will lead to the salvation of your family. So that's what was happening here. Notice the part that I really want to land on today. And when he had done this, verse 6, Luke chapter 5, verse 6, the first part, when Simon and his companion had done this, the miracle did not happen until after he had done it. <coughs> Obedience precedes the miracle. Obedience precedes the salvation. Obedience precedes the breakthrough. 
You must obey God first and then the miracle will follow. You must listen to what God is saying. You've heard it. But you must do it. Somebody say you must do it. You must do it. You must be a doer of the word. Somebody say I am a doer. I am a doer. I am a doer. I am a doer. Are you a doer? Yes. I am a doer. I am a doer of the word. God can take you from a nobody to the palace if you obey him, if you listen to what he's telling you to do. Look at that verse 6. And when he had done this, notice when he had done this, preceded the next phrase. They caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. They caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Let me remind you, these are professional fishermen. They have e e employed, engaged every available knowledge in fishing. And that knowledge that I'm talking about also came from the storehouse. And that storehouse is in Christ. We cover that in Colossians 2 verse 3. <coughs> For in him, in God, dwells all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So they've engaged all that knowledge. But somehow, this particular night, it didn't work. So Jesus showed up and gave them supernatural insights of what they must do now in this particular case. Does that mean they can apply the same thing tomorrow? No. The solution is for now. That's what it's called word of wisdom. God's supernatural insight that I must do now, now. What you must do now, now. That answer is in God. That answer is in God. So my admonition, my, I'm calling you into the deeper place. I'm calling you. The Holy Ghost is calling you into intimacy. He's calling you into a place of fellowship. He's calling you. Zion is calling you to a higher place of praise. I can see. Zion is calling you to a higher place of praise. God is calling you into a deeper place of intimacy. That naughty problem, that difficult problem, that problem that you cannot figure out. We talked about that, I think it was last week or the week before that, when Daniel was presented with a naughty problem. The king had a dream. This is a spiritual problem. Whether it's a spiritual problem, whether it's a business problem, whether it's a family problem, whether it's a medical problem, the answer is in him, in Christ. Whether it's a fishing problem, like the one we are looking at today, the answer is in Christ. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The answer is in Christ. But I want you to see that verse 6. When he had done this, have you done what God told you to do? Have you obeyed God? Have you done what he told you to do? Because until you do it, the other side, which is they caught a great number of fish and their net was broke, breaking. And the reason their net was breaking is because the catch was supposed to be for plural. They only deployed one. So, there's another message in that. You have to obey God to the letter. If God tells you to give 500, give 500. Don't give 450. Don't give 499. 499 is still disobedience. Is there you need? <laughs> Even 499.99 is still disobedience because what he told you to do is 500. He knows what you don't know. Obey God. So for those of you that you are watching me right now, what God is maybe telling you, and I know God is speaking to many of you. Have you obeyed him? Have you done what he told you to do? What he told you to do in the word or what he told you by prophecy? Or what he told you in your heart. He's spoken to you. About your diet. About your food intake. About your relationship. Your friendship. The people that you call friends. God has told you to separate yourself from them. 
because they are poison to you. But you know, they are my homies. They are my road dog. They are going to roll you all, all the way to hell if you don't listen to what God is telling you. Now, it, this is the area where you get specific instruction. So the instruction that God has given me will be different from the one he has given you. So I can't tell you to do what God told me to do. We have general instruction from the word, but the specific instruction of what you must do, what I must do, this is where you find it in him. And this is one of the, one of the manifestations of word of wisdom, the wisdom of God, or what to do in that situation that you are in. Has this been a blessing to you? So they signal to their partners, verse 7, in the other boat to come and help them because the catch was so big. When you listen to God, when you follow what God tells you, the miracle will be so big, it will be so mind-boggling that you will need help to gather it. They came and the, the partners came, the second part of verse 7, and filled both of the boat so that they began to sink. Verse 8, and when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knee, saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man, Lord. For he, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm prophesying this to somebody. After you obey God, after you listen to what God has told you to do, this is going to be your experience. For he and all who are with him, his partners, were astonished. Astonished is they were startled. They were shocked. They were astonished at the catch of the fish which they are taking. When you astonish professionals in their profession, <coughs> that's a miracle. When you astonish doctors in their profession, in their medical practice, that's a miracle. When you astonish professionals in their chosen field, that field that they, they are deemed experts, that's something to be remarked about. That's remarkable. Glory to God. These guys were professional fishermen, yet the Bible said they were astonished. It wasn't just Simon Peter that was astonished. Him and his partners were astonished. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the cash of the fish that they are taking. And so also were James and John, the son of Zebedee, who were partnered with Simon. And Jesus spoke to him and said, do not be afraid. He was also a prophet. Jesus was giving them a miracle, but was also speaking to him prophetically in that prophetic act. He now said to him, do not be afraid. From, from now on, you will catch men. Just like a caught fish, you will catch them. Yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed today? Yes. For he himself knows what to do. In this passage that we read today, in the message that we received today, God spoke to us about how to listen, listen to what God is saying. Many of us are receiving revelation. You are receiving wisdom from God of what to do, what to abstain from, what to, to, to invest in, what to stay away from, what to jump into, what to jump out of, what to be involved in, what to not be involved in. But we ignore it. Many times we ignore it because we are thinking, what will my family say? What will the church say? What will those people say? The board of the church. Uh, you made it. You are, God is telling you to make a decision that does not make sense. And your board of directors will question you. Well, just tell them, this is what the Lord is telling me to do. And I'm going to obey God. Now, it, does that mean that you may not be wrong? Well, it depends on what you heard. Did you hear from God? If you heard from God and it's really the Holy Spirit, the answer will always be peace. But if you heard from your flesh or you heard from your mind, then your guess is as good as mine. If the Lord is the one that has spoken to you, and there are many ways to confirm that, how to hear from God. Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
your mind, your spirit must be tuned in. You must be versed in the word of God. This is one of the things that makes your heart a safe guide. You know scripture because the Holy Spirit will minister scripture to you. He will give you phrases. He will give you words. Just like the series that we are doing now. For he himself knew what he would do. The moment I woke up, I knew exactly what God was saying because I know that scripture. And then it began to download and it began to expand in my heart. So as you go into close out the month of September and step into the month of October, pay attention to the communications of God. Notice I did not say pay attention to how God speaks. Because when you say speak, your natural mind will confine it to words or audio or audio communication. No. God can talk to you by touch. God can talk to you by impression. God can talk to you by smell. God can talk to you through your five senses. Glory to God. Pay attention to what God is saying. It may save your life. It may save the life of your loved one. It may save your business. It may save your ministry. It may save you. Glory to God. For he himself knows what to do. I want to pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for Fire Church. I pray for everyone that is watching from home, from their office. Uh, maybe they came across it on Facebook or YouTube. Father, I pray that they will be tuned into your communication. They will be tuned into your speakings, your communications. And they will know how to truly and correctly and accurately <coughs> interpret what you are saying so that they will know what to do. And Lord, I also pray for grace to be obedient. Grace to be obedient to what you are telling them to do. For if Simon did not obey what Jesus said in this passage that we read today, the miracle that followed would not have been his experience. Many of us, we have missed out on many miracles that God had for us. Many deliverances that God had for us. Because we are too carnal. We will not listen to what God is saying. Because it doesn't make any sense. When many times, many times, not all the time, but many times what God is saying will not compute with your sense. Many times what God is saying may not make sense to conventional wisdom. Because what you are receiving is supernatural wisdom. So, Father, I pray the grace to tune in everyone in Fire Church, everyone that's watching from uh, social media land. Father, I pray the grace to tune in to this communication of heaven, to hear what God is saying, to attune ourselves to what God is saying, and to be able to do what God is requesting from us to do. Father, we receive in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we close out this month, we close out with miracle. Yes. There is protection. There is covering from heaven in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. There is covering from heaven over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. As you enter into the month of October, you enter into breakthrough. Yes. You enter with mercy. Mercy paved the way for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You begin to bring in testimonies in your finances, Amen. testimony in your marriage, testimony in your health, testimony all around you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank you for watching today. This is Pastor Bishop. We'll be back another time. God bless you. In Jesus' name.